how you doing everybody welcome to my channel you two can be great this is the growing up hip-hop season 5 episode 20 review sit down thrown down before I do go ahead and check out my book just add pepper on Amazon first book published A.S. Blaine is the author that I published it under um, the author a pseudonym I published it under make sure y'all check it out leave me a comment on Amazon Hopefully it's a good one because I really appreciate it. If you feel like I have some, you know, work to do because I did it when I was 21 years old and I'm not a self-proclaimed writer. I'm a mathematician. That's what I do. That's what I'm best at. Let me know. And for those of you who've already supported me, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And let's move on to this review, all right? So we've been waiting for the sit down to happen. Romeo wanted to sit down with Jojo, Angela, Vanessa, Boogie, you know, Lil Easy, Brianna, Lil Twist, everybody on the cast because it seems like he he feels he himself feels like there's a lack of communication between everybody and doing this sit down will clear out a few things, right? However, the sit down came up and only three people showed up. We got Lil Twist, Lil Easy, um, and Brianna, the only three that showed up. Why? Because Lil Easy ran his mouth in the wrong direction when he was trying to issue this invitation. Granted, Romeo is a grown ass man. He himself has all the numbers or at least all the work emails for everybody that's within this doing this cast with him because he helped Angela produce the show. So if he wanted to reach every single person without Easy's help, he had their email, their contact number, their bank account information, whatever the hell they used to pay them because they all, you know, they started this. He's one of the leading people. He had the ability to go and contact them, but it's almost like Romeo feels like he's above them all. So he said Lil Easy like his little assistant to go and plan this but Lil Easy is a little bit two-faced and he's already of one mind he does not agree with the way Romeo is moving so I don't know why Romeo felt comfortable sending Easy out there to go and be the one to assemble everybody because Easy went out and the image and the energy that he's giving all these people Angela Jojo Vanessa Lil Twist it's very different than the energy that he was giving Romeo and Master P when they were asking him to go and do this job in the first place. But Master P shows up along with all the slow Master P's asses. We got a big old donkey behind his back in that blue suit. They show up 45 minutes late as if this is a job. If I'm going to a job interview, it's one thing because you're giving me a job, so I got to wait for you until you're ready. But if you're asking me to meet up with you because you want to square shit out, you want to talk about stuff, why the hell are you going to be 45 minutes late? Like, it's almost like the way that Romeo is moving is like he's bigger than. I'm the person who brought the show in the first place. I got bigger things than I'm doing. So if I want to meet you guys at 45 minutes later, I'm going to meet you 45 minutes later. You're just going to sit up there and wait. I don't get that mentality. I feel like he needs to get himself off a pedestal and just get down to earth and just be a little bit more grounded and level-headed and down to earth when he's dealing with people. I'm going to keep talking about what he said and, you know, how it worked out. So... Uh, Angela didn't show up because she feels like Romeo should have called her. Romeo feels like Angela should have called him and it's just like this is a nonsense situation because they're both saying the same thing except not one of them want to be too they don't want to be stop being stubborn and talk to each other it's almost like I'm not going to be the one to call him however Angela did make an effort several times to call Romeo in the past episodes but Romeo has complaints well she's doing it on camera I'm confused. When she she says she calls you off camera, you still don't pick up. If they call you on camera, you still don't pick up. Which is it? Because you're talking to the shade room, you're talking to TMZ, you're doing the Breakfast Club interviews, but you don't want to talk to the person that you got beef with. I'm confused. Romeo, I don't get his movements. It's it's kind of irritating me, but I'm gonna get to what I think the problem is later on. Then Lil Twist said he didn't go because he feels Romeo's being fake, and I agree. Then we got Vanessa feeling like he has nothing to do with her and Jojo feeling like he's the family muscle and he's not going to deal with Romeo unless he's trying to defend his entire family. Okay? Then the conversation begins. Easy lets everybody know that he feels like he was put in the middle of the drama and that Romeo should have called everybody to set this up instead of asking him to do it. But Lil Easy, you're a grown ass man. If Romeo asked you to do something that puts you in the middle of drama and you didn't feel comfortable enough doing it, you had the opportunity to say, no, I don't feel comfortable doing this. I think that you guys should handle this on your own, but I will be there at the meeting. You chose to do it because it was your way of staying on the show. You needed some kind of storyline and you agreed to it. Now you're sitting up here talking about, how I just didn't know why you put me in the middle. He didn't put you in the middle, bro. Bro, you made a choice. Take responsibility for the decisions that you made. He got on my damn nerves, for real. Then, Buggy asks, what's the problem? Why are we having this meeting? Of course, already Romeo's on the defense. He begins by saying, what you mean, what's the problem? Why are we here acting like the question that Boogie asked him was so way out of left field? It's not. Why are we here? You assembled a meeting. What is the purpose of this? Because you didn't tell us what it is. So give me a detailed response as to why I am here in this meeting. 
when everybody else is not. And I don't feel like I have issues with you. Of course, Romeo begins by explaining the Bow Wow situation, saying that he used to see Bow Wow as his idol when he was a kid. They show a little picture of them when they were children, and they basically dress the same. Hell, they could have been brothers looking at them. They look like they were related. But y'all know that they, this little rap beef the people create to make themselves more popular. Jocelyn Hernandez tried to have rap beef with Nicki Minaj and I think Cardi B and other people because if she maybe she felt like it was going to get her up there so we can know who she is. We know that Nicki and Cardi are supposed to have beef at some point. Then we got Trina beef. There's several beef in the rap industry that have been started by social media and what they say and what Twitter says and what people say and insinuate just so people can have drama and people's you know songs can be known. Oh, well, who's this person who's the beef? Oh, he's the one who's saying this? Oh, let's go see it. With Romeo and Bow Wow being children, it was the beef that they created between them. But Romeo's telling us now, I never have beef with a dude. And I get that he's explaining this because then Angela becomes a topic of conversation. We know that for past, what, five seasons, it's been Angela either going with Bow Wow or going with Lil Romeo. Which Lil is she going to choose? She going to choose which one? We even talked about it. Who she should she be with? Bow Wow or Romeo? Bow Wow's the playboy. Romeo's the sanctified dude. We don't know who she, who she wants to pick, but it was like a storyline that they were willing to play out because it gave the show the drama we needed for us to keep watching the show. But Romeo sent up here saying that Angela was used as a pawn to create the drama. Well, bro, this is reality TV. Everybody's been used as a pawn to create drama. It's reality fake TV. We need fake drama to keep fake watching so we can get our lives while we're on quarantine. So you knew what you signed up for when you got on here. You just didn't anticipate that you would be the bad guy. Romeo would not be complaining if it was somebody else's drama that was causing the show to keep going. But because it centers around him and how he's moving, he's offended because he feels like I'm above it all. I got shit I'm doing. I'm producing shows. I'm acting on, you know, X on the beach. I'm doing this and this and this. I shouldn't be the, the bone of contention where people are asking me what's wrong with me and DMing me and making comments and talking about that. Da, 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 da. I should be the one on the side like Shawnee O'Neal or like Jackie from Merit's Medicine not having drama with people just being the spectator. That's not the case. You are in the show, so you're just as much a, a pawn as everybody else. That's just what reality TV is. You should know what you signed up for. Then, Master P joins the conversation and starts attacking Boogie. Now, y'all know that Boogie, you know, it's not the same age as Master P. Master P should be having conversations with Damon if he feels like Boogie, Boogie's stepping, stepping out of line. But it gets to the point to where Boogie's trying to get his questions answered about the phone and Master P's almost talking to him condescending like, like he's a child. And he even brings up his father. I'm not your, I'm not Damon. You can't talk to me that way. What is you doing? These are kids that are having a conversation in the same age bracket as your son. This man shouldn't have even been there. Nobody else's parent is there. Brianna's mom and dad ain't there. Uh, Lil Easy's mom is not there. Boogie's dad is not there. He probably would lit the whole place up not listening to nobody and running his mouth and causing issues. You're sitting up here in a conversation that should be had with people of the same, of their same peers and you're here for what? I don't understand why Master P was there. I, I did not like his presence being there. Him and his blue suit needs to just get up and go and walk somewhere else. Go walk down the hill because he was walking up the hill for the meeting to walk down the hill and go find himself something else with his rich ass sitting next to Brianna. You don't need to be in this conversation and you definitely don't need to be attacking Boogie's. Boogie asks a very valid question. Why the hell don't you pick up your phone when we call you, bruh? Why? If we have such issues, why aren't you answering your phone? Because if, if you really wanted to settle this, you could have picked up the phone, we would have talked about it independently. I don't have an issue with you, so I don't know why you have me here in this meeting. Everybody else that you have an issue with didn't even show up. And you show up, you showed up with your entire home, all your kids, your cousins, your nephews, the ones that are still trying. You showed up with every single person in your household for this one meeting. For what? They're not even on the show. I'm confused. Anyway... Romeo decides to downplay Angela and um, the, his flirtation with Angela saying that that was fake and then they show flashback of scenes of him talking to Angela telling Angela he likes her he got feelings for her why are we here I like your ass all this stuff but now that he's decided he don't want to be with Angela he's realized how dumb Angela made him look by basically playing the flirtation game but never really fully giving him what he wanted and now Bow Wow is on the show his so called nemesis that he that was created even though he says it's cool with Bow Wow he's downplaying it now because he didn't want to look like a punk. Romeo is a very sensitive individual from what I'm getting at. He's very sensitive and it's almost like what you say to him even though he's trying to keep up this I'm um, strong facade. He may have gone home and cried to his daddy. That's why his daddy's here 
backing him up because he's taking it very seriously. It's hurting his feelings because he's feeling like I made the show. I was part of the producing and now I'm being made to look a certain way. One, I was made to look like a punk because I've been chasing this girl for five seasons and she didn't give me a time of day. Then two, you got this other dude on the show that's supposed to be the guy that she would pick over me, making me look like shit. So now I got to do something to make her look worse than I am. I'm going to say something like, hey, she's showing her body on Instagram. She's degrading herself. And I'm going to talk about all the things I have because it's making me feel insecure because I got somebody on the show that people are saying that the girl I was chasing would choose him over me. All of this is because Romeo's in his feelings. He's in his feelings. He feels some type of way because of the portrayal of what they've had him on the show. And I don't think he knows how to handle it. But they give us a pause on this conversation to go over to TT and Tyron discussing Egypt's current behavior before she joins them in the room. Then TT lets us know that she's going to text Tretch and let Tretch know what Egypt's been doing and her behavior and how she's changing. Because if Peppa's ass is not going to get her mind right, maybe Tretch would. The problem that I have with TT and Tyran is they're not getting my point. Egypt is 21 years old. Yes, by law, she's an adult. Maturity-wise, I don't think she's fully grown in the head to make certain decisions. However, in your adult life, as you're growing up from 18 all the way to your 30, you have to make certain mistakes in your life so you can learn from them. Most of us don't really hit maturity and really understand some crucial, valuable, golden facts of life until about 35 or 40 years old. By then, we'd have been through shit. 21, you'd have been through nothing. I'm sorry, unless you were in foster care or some extreme situation happened to you, God forbid. With Tresh, with Egypt's situation, she was raised in a household filled with money. She was raised in a very well, you know, she was raised in, in an environment where she doesn't fight. She's, you know, like a princess. So for her to have gone through an ex life experience to help her understand when somebody's playing her or using her or manipulating her, she may be intelligent, but her heart is what's leading her right now. And her heart is pointing at Sam. And that's the person that she's going to side with. The more that TT and Tyra and everybody's pushing her, pushing her, pushing her, the more she's going to feel like, oh, you know, Sam, we're going through a lot to be together. We're fighting everybody. We're staying strong. It's me and you against the world. We're Joker and I'm your Harley Quinn. If they just leave that girl alone and let her figure her life, she might make the decision to leave Sam on her own. Y'all forcing her and pushing her is going to push her towards him because she's going to feel like they're standing strong together. And she's going to try to prove to everybody that they're going to make it and stay in a relationship that not, that's not healthy for her. That's just what it's going to be. But Egypt shows up and, you know, they ask her about the situation. Her explanation sounds as tired as the situation she did when she put her hands on Brianna because everything she says, oh, Brianna thinks that she's this, she's that, all of that has nothing specifically to do with her except for the fact that she knows Brianna doesn't like Sam. That's all that was. Every explanation that she gave did not suffice in my opinion for her to put her hands on Brianna as she's explaining it to Titi. Everything that she said is most likely what Sam told her because Sam is feeling some type of way when somebody's coming at her. Sam already tried to get Titi out of the family by making up a story. Now he's gonna make Brianna the backup because she's next trying to get him out of the family. And I guarantee you if Tretch fixes his mouth to say hey I'm not cool with Sam. Sam is going to come up with something else to get Egypt to despise her father. It's all Sam's doing. Whatever he has to do to keep himself in Egypt's good graces, even if he makes her family look like they're bad people, he's going to do it because that's his spirit. Now, we got back to the conversation with Romeo and Boogie. Boogie is still asking about why Romeo doesn't pick up the phone. Masterpiece explanation is extremely vague as he interrupts Boogie again. And then they bring up ICDC College. I'm just looking at shit. Why are we talking about, it was a damn joke. I get it. ICDC College, the college just closed down. It was a useless school to begin with. It was a school that we should not even be marketing to black people in its entirety. I don't care if Master B is trying to spin it, talking about it's education, it's education. If you want to market education to black folk, pick something like go get a bachelor's degree, go get a, a skill, be engineers, be doctors, be lawyers, be congressmen, be mayors, be counselors, be psychiatrists, be surgeons. Market that shit. Don't market ICDC college and expect people like us to be okay with it. I have a degree in mathematics, bro. I will not be caught dead at ICDC college. So for you to be sitting up there as the face for our black man on that, on that college, it was funny to me. And Twist making a joke, it was a joke. You did it. You learned your lesson. Please don't ever do it again. Move the hell on. Move on. Then... Romeo brings up the difference between him and Boogie saying that he got big businesses coming up and it was condescending because he's making it look like Boogie ain't got shit going on with him. By the way, what is Boogie doing? Somebody tell me. I mean, I know he got something going on. 
It's just the way that Romeo said it. It was wrong for him to say it that way because he's putting himself above everybody else, making them seem, making it them seem like they're not good enough. But hell, y'all on the same show. Y'all are all on TV together. So I don't think that you should put them at a level that's less than. I'm just saying. Then they bring up the phone issue again because Romeo's been dancing around it. Then Romeo finally tells the truth. He says, I've been around these guys behind me that came with me my posse for seven years. It took them seven years to get into my good graces to where I'm going to pick up the phone. Who the fuck are you for me to sit up here and work seven fucking years to get on the phone? This is not the scripture, okay? We know that Jacob worked seven years because he wanted to marry, what's it called? Rachel and instead the father gave him Leah and then he had to work seven more years to get Rachel to be his wife Hence the 12 sons that big they gave us the seven uh, Hence the tribes of Israel. I'm, I'm losing my history right now, but that's how we got the tribes of Israel Right through Jacob and him marrying Leah and Rachel, but he wanted Rachel He didn't work seven years for her and got Leah and then worked seven more years to get Rachel This is not the same situation Robbie. We don't sit up here But you don't got to work seven years to get you to pick up the damn phone if you're his friend You're his friend if you're not you're not but Romeo tells the truth. He says, look, we don't talk outside of this show. We're not cool. We don't hang out with co-workers. When I'm on the X on the beach, I don't talk to them. When I get off, when I get off work, we don't call each other. This is the same situation. This is a job. And while we're having a job, you are not my friend. And Boogie told us that his feelings were hurt. And mine would be too. If this is how you look at the situation. Because if I'm thinking that we're cool, we're filming together, we're joking together. You know, I'm calling you, you're not picking up the phone. It's not like I'm not trying to get to know you better, but you're making it seem like I'm just, you know, that dude over there that you just don't care about. And it's hurtful. But if Romeo told the truth and that's how it feels, so you got to just swallow that and bite the bullet. He don't want to be friends with you. He don't care. You got to work seven years in the fields to freaking get his attention. He don't care. You have to work hard to get in his good graces because he's holier than thou. Then we got Romeo deciding to let everybody know that he's leaving the show. Then his father, Master P, is like, you know what? If that's what you want to do, I'm siding with you. Walk away from the bag. But then as they're leaving, Romeo's fine-ass cousin, Marlon, seems like all these people in his family are just beautiful. That boy, that boy was fine. They call him Lil Walker Romeo because of his dress and how he presents himself. Decides to buck up and show up because he wants his five minutes of fame. He says that Boogie was making jokes the whole time and they're all joking about him and da-da-da-da-da. Basically just doing the most. And he says, you know what? In my, where I come from, we put the gloves on. What does that mean? Boogie is Damon Dash's son. If you want to square up, he'll square up with you, bruh. I don't know why he felt the need to go that route. I don't get the purpose of it. It makes no sense to me. He was too fine to be getting his fist up in the air and fighting some other dude because he don't want to kiss Romeo's ass. I don't get what the problem is. I don't like how Romeo carried himself in this entire conversation. I felt like it was wrong for him to bring his whole family and friends. It was wrong for his father to come along. He's a grown-ass man. He could have called every single person independently and said, hey, I'm having a meeting this date here. I really want y'all to be there because I want to just, you know, clear the air and hash things out. And it would have been squashed. All this excess shit you're doing is good drama for the show, but it's unnecessary. Bow Wow shows up 45 minutes late, misses everything. They're all left. So what are you doing there? It, it was just ridiculous. His, I don't understand why he was there. It was just wrong. Maybe so he can have a scene with Lil Easy because Lil Easy don't have any other thing else but to just have scenes with everybody else's personal business. Then we got TT and Sean beating up with Vanessa to eat and catch up. Brianna decides to text uh, TT about the Romeo situation and Romeo quitting. TT says, damn, that's the wrong person should have quit. Should have been Sam. Sh Sam should go ahead and quit. We won't miss him. But y'all know Sam ain't going nowhere. That's his money. Then TT takes a bathroom break as a setup because now... Vanessa has a convo with Sean regarding whether he's going to marry TT now that she's pregnant. Let me be abundantly clear. If I get pregnant, it's a shotgun wedding. You are marrying me whether you like it or not. I will put that ring on your finger. We'll have an officiate. If I have to sit up there and make sure that you sleep while it happens, when I'm, I'm going to sign that paper with your fingernails, you will be married to me if you knock me up. That is a guaranteed proposal. You don't even got to ask me. Once this baby is inside my stomach, we are hitched for life. That's just me though. But Sean says that he's gonna marry, he's gonna propose to her in two days. So we might see a finale proposal after the two episodes are done. Then Vanessa and Angela meet up to talk about Romeo leaving. Angela at this point is shut down. She's given us the impression that maybe she don't give a damn that Romeo is not calling her no more. He's not picking up the phone. She lets us know that the way that she started the show is she had the idea. She ran into Romeo and said, you know, we come from good families. Why don't we start the show together? And that's how they did it. But they've been there from day one. I can't imagine that Romeo's ignoring Angela and treating her like she's non-existent like she's just a co-worker or she don't matter to him it doesn't hurt her feelings it hurts her feelings but she's just not going to want to show it because she doesn't want to give romeo the 
upper hand of him knowing that his decisions are affecting her personal emotions and that's just what it is but she's hurt and vanessa acknowledged that she's definitely hurt then we show tyran meeting up with tretch to discuss Egypt's behavior the fight comes up but tretch kind of starts off almost being okay with it because he's noticing that the fight between egypt was between egypt and brianna because him and brianna had got into an inner an argument with him saying respect your elders respect your elders it's almost like peppa and tretch are giving egypt a pass for acting ratchet and crazy because it was brianna that she put her hands on which is not parent like even though my parents may feel like this person deserves me to beat their ass and they're sitting in front of me and i'm saying i beat their ass they're not gonna say that to me They'll tell me, listen, I prefer that in situations where you feel like you're in a hostile position for the purpose of avoiding you going to jail and possibly having me come to bail you out, it's best for you to be the bigger person and walk away so far as the other person doesn't put their hands on you. But if you're the first person to physically attack somebody, I am very disappointed in you as a parent. And I don't think it's the appropriate way for you to handle yourself when I'm not around. That's what a parent should say. And then in the back of their mind, they should say, yep, yeah, that's my girl. Whoop her ass. Whoop it. That's how parents are supposed to behave. Instead, Tretch and Peppa are almost giving Egypt a pass because they've had issues independently with Brianna, which is not right either because Brianna is significantly older than Egypt and could have whooped her ass. Then, Tretch asked the golden question. Where was Sam when all this was going on? The same question I asked. Of course, Sam was the one who was egging her on. He was the instigator. And Tretch flashes back to him talking to Sam saying you got a problem with people you got a problem with the whole family if you're gonna marry my daughter she's very well protected your job as her man is to protect her in situations where violence has ensued you should be right next to her pulling her away you know that her and Brianna got beef you know that her don't get along but Sam don't give a damn about that he's the one who caused this fight in the first place Egypt would never have approached Brianna she would have let it go ignored it and walked away and focused on her family Sam was the one who egged her on instigated her got her to the point where she felt comfortable enough to put her hands on somebody and when it was happening he was in the back talking about I didn't say nothing let me just try to address little twist now because it's gonna be me and Brianna which check everybody at the party instead he got punked because little twist wasn't having that bullshit anyway that's how this episode ended. They're, they showed us next week's episode, and we're going to see Tretch finally have it out with Egypt and express his thoughts and his opinion. I don't know if he's going to really, like, you know, have the same energy as Peppa had at the end of it once Egypt tells her sorry ass side of the story and not take response to the fact that she's married to somebody who really isn't a good person, influential, influence-wise. Maybe the show is cutting and pasting pieces of it to make Sam look like the bad guy. But what I'm seeing is, even with the show cutting and pasting, if every member of your family cannot stand this person, I can't imagine that even if the show is off, the situation will be different. Egypt is just young and naive, and she's in love. And we love hard, especially when it's new to us. And she's going to have to love and learn the right person to love based on personal experience. Everybody just need to let the girl live. Let her live. Let her marry Sam. Let her enjoy herself. Let her be his Harley Quinn until he leaves her alone so she can go and dump herself into another batch of chemicals and become somebody else on her own. But let her be with this man and let everybody just need to leave her alone. Stop trying to control what she's doing. She wants to be with Sam. Leave it alone. But... There's two more episodes left till the season finale comes. We still know that JoJo and Twist are going to have beef because JoJo wants to buck up and fight somebody. We know that Angela has a stalker, and I want to know who's stalking her. It's probably going to be Bow Wow. Shit, everybody is stalking her. Then we also find out more about um, Bromeo's stance on the show because people are still asking if this is permanent or if this is some other twist for the show. I think it's permanent for now. Maybe seasons later he might come back on a humble tip, but who knows? Then we got Marriage Boot Camp coming up in July, which I will be reviewing, and so on and so forth. Now, I stopped reviewing Marriage to Medicine because I thought maybe you guys would be interested, but I know that I got some people telling me to review it. So starting next week, I'm going to start reviewing Marriage to Medicine as well. You guys have a good day. Stay safe. I'm going to do. Have, I'm going to start doing um, what I call, I should call it something like, I just can or it's supposed to be like a rant of me talking about whatever hot topic is up especially with the whole uh, Floyd situation and the whole uh, all these uh, uh, Ahmad Aubrey situation that's going on the rice is going on a minute so everything I'm, I'm gonna be doing little commentaries on what I'm seeing Doja Cat everything that's going on but I'm gonna have to title it differently because it's not reviews so y'all give me actually give me your opinions what do you think I should call it the little rants I'll be doing, what should I, what should I title it so y'all will know that this is going to be a rant about some hot topic going on, not necessarily a review for the show. Give me your opinion below because I do need a title. I'm still working on it. Anyway, 
Have a good evening, you guys. Stay safe. Careful uh, with crowds. Stay away from trouble. I want y'all to stay safe. You guys go ahead and have a good night's sleep, and I love y'all. Bye.